Hey guys, welcome back to the AI in Medicine YouTube channel. My name's Deanna, I'm a third year medical student at the University of Auckland. Today, we're gonna to be looking at question banks. Now, there are so many question bank options out there to help you revise for whatever it is you have coming up in medical school. Today, we'll be comparing two of these, past medicine and AMBOSS. So stay tuned to figure out about the pros and cons of each option and which ones we here on the channel would personally recommend. If you have any other question banks that you want to find out more about, let us know in the comments down below or check us out on Facebook or Instagram at UOA. A I M. So let's get into it. Let's get going with some first impressions. So right here we have the free version of past medicine for preclinical students. So that's medical students years one to three. We have a huge list of question categories that we can select from under questions. And we also have this feature called knowledge tutor. So this is kind of what sets apart past medicine from some other question bank options. The knowledge tutor is a way you can test yourself on fact-based recall, whereas the question section gives you your standard clinical scenario type questions. So Knowledge Tutor could be great for memorizing those small facts that might come up and help you out in a multi-choice style question, whereas the clinical scenario kind of question will help you think more about problem solving. So if I start a new question session with all of the questions, It'll open up a new question bank page. Here you can see, because I've selected all under categories, it's giving me all 4,000 questions. Um, so right off the bat, if I just wanted to do 10, it would be selecting from all of the available options instead of selecting a small selection for me. Here they've given me a scenario, which is quite short, and then a bunch of options to choose from. I also have a reference ranges section, which tells me about the reference ranges for the lab values that I might be expecting. This can be a really helpful hint, but of course, try not to use this as it's better if you can remember it off the top of your head. Cool, so from the list, if we pick an option, let's say mesoderm, and submit our answer, we'll then get a rundown of the percentages of people who have selected each option, which one was correct, and a little bit more information. So on the side, we have a selection of YouTube videos that could be helpful to study this topic. And below, we have a little bit of an explanation about the different answer options and also a small table explaining some more details about embryology. There's an option to add some notes if you want to record some of this information to refer back to later, which I think is a really helpful function. Um, also, the media option is quite good if you really want to go more in depth and study. And of course, we have a score up on the side letting us know how we're going with our session. If we go on to the next session, those questions remain and we can refer back to the questions that we did earlier just by clicking on the number. When I click end and review, it'll give me a rundown of the number of questions I attempted, what they were about and my score. So in that quick rundown of past medicine, some things that I noticed, the design of the website isn't my favorite feature. It looks kind of basic, ugly. Um, the amount of information that came up was definitely enough to help you learn more about the topic if you got the question wrong. But sometimes in a question bank session, you just want to do your questions um, and learn from that. On to AMBOSS now. Let's set up and question bank session. So this takes you to a page with some options for the type of exam you're studying for, the systems, symptoms, discipline, you want to study articles specifically that you want to study, or if you've saved questions. You can also organize questions by difficulty or status, as in whether you've answered it previously or not. I think that these features offer a super comprehensive way to really focus your study. So for example, if I was studying the endocrine system, I could select this from systems, and maybe I wanna know about endocrine disorders related to the abdomen. I can then select abdomen under symptoms, and then I know roughly what kind of questions I'm gonna get. So I can have some really targeted revision sessions. For difficulty, the default is to select from one to three, Let's go all the way up to five, just for the sake of it. 
And then you have the option of creating a title to save this kind of session for later. There's also the option to adjust how many questions you have in your session. I find this helpful um, because with PassMed, you're just going through the whole question list available to you. Whereas with this, you can just do say five at a time or 10 at a time. So let's say I'm gonna do 10 questions. There's an option for exam mode or study mode. I personally find that study mode is more beneficial when you're learning a topic as you can extract more information about it while you're studying. So here you can see I have a scenario, I'm given some lab values, and there's my answer options. Some features that are different between PassMed and AMBOSS that I've noticed so far. The AMBOSS website has much more of a clean design. I prefer the white colors because it's less distracting, but that's a personal preference. Here we have the option of crossing out some of our answer options, which prevent us from accidentally clicking on them. We also have three options for hints. We can get a hint where key information in the question is underlined, a hint where an imaginary attending will give us a tip, or we can see our reference lab values. Now remember with past medicine, your reference lab values are always available and don't count as a hint. But with AMBOSS, if you use a hint to answer a question, it will come up as answered correctly with help as opposed to answered correctly. So let's say we get an attending tip for this question. A little box will come up like this with some more information that might guide our answer. The key info, as I said, will underline the key information that we have to pay the most attention to. Then we can click an answer option and immediately we'll be hit with some more information about that specific option without learning what the correct answer is straight away. So there's still the chance to keep deducing down what the correct answer is. Whereas with past medicine, you click an option and immediately the correct answer will appear. We can show the answer straight away by clicking this button and we can show all the explanations for why each answer was correct or incorrect. This information can definitely be overwhelming when you're first using a question bank because if you haven't heard of the disease in the question, it can be really tough to distinguish the answer options from each other. Also on the left up here, we can see the difficulty of this question. This question was a five out of five for difficulty, so we probably don't have to feel too bad that we got that one wrong. Um, there's also a helpful timer to tell you how long you spent on that question and on the session as a whole. So let's say that you've been doing a few sessions and you wanna know how you're doing compared to the rest of your class or the rest of the people using the same question bank software. Both of these platforms have options for you to review your performance and how you're tracking. So let's check them out. On past medicine, under performance, we have options for questions, summary, by category. So let's have a look at a summary. Here we can see our average score compared to the average score of registered users. And it's given us a percentile of users that we fall into. On AMBOSS, we're also compared to our peer group with a percentile, and there's an analysis page to help us break down strengths and weaknesses. In the study summary, we have the number of questions answered, the percentage we got correct, our percentile, time per question, and the total time we've spent. At the bottom of the page, we also have study recommendations based on the questions that we got right or wrong. On past medicine, we also have a breakdown of our performance in the Knowledge Tutor, and we have a breakdown of performance by category. All right, so based on the stuff we've talked about so far, personally, I prefer AMBOSS just because of the way that it looks and the option to have hints. Um, I like how it allows you to go through the answer options one by one instead of giving you the correct answer straight away, as I feel like this helps you with your problem solving mindset of working through options one by one. However, we have been comparing the free versions. So what about the actual cost of a subscription? In terms of comparing the free trials themselves, the AMBOSS free trial lasts for five days, which could be enough time to cram for a test, but definitely isn't going to get you through a whole year. Whereas the PASS Medicine free trial for preclinical students lasts for 12 months, which I think is a pretty good deal. So let's talk about pricing. Past Medicine has different options based on the exams that you're studying for. For the average New Zealand medical student, 
The medical student's finals revision could be a good option. So for the medical student's finals revision package from Pass Medicine, you'll pay around $50 New Zealand for 12 months of access. Whereas with AMBOSS, you're paying about $10 a month for access to the medical library, their Anki add-on, the mobile app, but the question bank access will set you back an additional $79 a month or $300 a year. Taking all of this into consideration, I feel like PassMed is pretty worth it for what you get. You're not getting the pretty pictures like an AMBOSS, you're not getting those helpful hints, but you're paying a lot less. Also, Pass Medicine is catered towards a UK audience, whereas AMBOSS is catered towards the US. This affects the way that things are named, spelled, um, and the guidelines that are being used in the scenarios. For the New Zealand context, we tend to follow the British naming system more than we do the US, so this could be another factor in deciding which question bank to use. So feel free to let us know what you think in the comments down below. Let us know if there's any other question banks you'd like us to check out. And until the next video, happy studying.